As always, the Classic has a long run to the first turn. This one is far more likely to be determined by who runs their race than trips. Code of Honor has gotten steadily better with a great developmental pattern. Getting almost a thoroughbred point away from his elders, a repeat of his last would give him a shot here. But Shug has not done well at Santa Anita, and this Colt came in right on top of the race. We're still waiting to see this guy on grass. Noble Mission is a full brother to Frankel, and his progeny has run much better on turf. Elaine has always been top-notch, especially when she ran the huge one a year ago that took so much out of her that she disappeared for a while. She hasn't gotten back to that figure, but her last three were very good, and she gets about half a point in weight. The bad news is that Mott has been surprisingly bad at this, probably because he ships out late. None of his starters has ever even paired its top. Royal Delta won despite going back a couple of points. But note, the top in this case was the negative three last year, not the recent stuff. All of which makes handicapping this one a tough call since it's also the end of a long campaign. Higher Power did a lot of developing and made a big jump in the Pacific Classic before going back a couple of points last time. He's locally based and a strong contender on his best, but this is a classic O2 pattern and it's probably too soon for him to run big again. Math Wizard, Owendale, and War of Will are similar three-year-olds that would need new tops to be serious contenders. We give War of Will a better chance of running his race just because he's been out here longer, but we don't really like any of them. McKenzie has run big figures in every start this year, including one at a mile and a quarter. If he runs any one of those figures, he's probably even money or better to take this, and he's obviously California-based. But he's been campaigning a long time without a break. And there's the Baffert question. We will be watching to see how his other horses do. Mongolian Groom has just developed and developed and developed. He's locally based and fast enough to contend on his best. But this gelding has a history of bouncing immediately following new tops, and his last was just that. We'll look to catch him during the winter meet. Seeking the Soul comes from Dallas Stewart, who has a fair record at this with a small sample and an unbelievable record of getting big efforts on big days. This one shows a clear pattern of cycling to and from tops, and his top would give him a big shot here. If they're running his eyeballs out in June, he bounced badly when shipping to Del Mar, then better when he came back out to Santa Anita. Importantly, he's been in California since then. Seeking the soul might not run atop and might not win, but he's going to run well, which should at least get him into the exotics. Vino Rosso has run three straight negative figures, including one at Santa Anita, where Pletcher has done okay. But we feel compelled to point out again, not in Breeders' Cups, for whatever reason and that's some really tough data to ignore. Yoshida is very solid with good figures, and if he stays in training, he will probably break through with a new top at some point. But he's shipping east-west, and as we've seen, Mott is not great in California Breeders' Cup dirt races. So by now, hopefully, we'll have a feel as to how Baffert's horses are running. That's kind of a big deal, because if McKinsey runs his race, he's a likely winner. We don't like any of the three-year-olds. Seeking the soul is the value in this race. He's likely to run well, and most of the others are not. The only other two we would consider at all are the two Mott trainees. Elate and Yoshida at least were able to get in one local breeze. 